Building new things is a constant phenomenon all around the world. Governments, commercial organisations and wealthy individuals undertake costly construction projects like suspension bridges, skyscrapers and dams aimed at different objectives. The process involves immense financial resources, materials, sweat and blood. But at times some basic flaws in these multi-million dollar projects can lead to a disastrous end. Resultantly, we can see bridges destroyed, awesome buildings abandoned and complete complexes collapsed. Well, be prepared to hold your heart as today we'll be discussing some of the most expensive construction mistakes in the world. Before we begin, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos. Galloping Gertie Presently, the USA has over 600 bridges of different sizes and a large number of these are quite old. Out of this, 42% of the bridges were constructed before 1970. Some of these have been classified as structurally inefficient. However, some of these couldn't last long enough. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge, located in Washington, was constructed at the cost of $6.4 million and opened for use in 1940. Its cost, as per current estimates, would be about $126 million. Based on the length of the main span, at that time it was the third largest suspension bridge in the world. Only the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and the George Washington Bridge in New York City were larger than this mega-project. Workers faced worry when during the construction the bridge started to move vertically during windy weather. But the construction continued as per the design and it was named Galloping Gertie. The bridge collapsed just after months of its opening. One would be interested to know why it happened. It was the first ever bridge constructed with large beams of carbon steel anchored in the concrete blocks. Previously, suspension bridges were built using open trusses, a framework designed for supporting the structure. The fresh design encountered the effect of diverting wind both above and below the bridge, which created a swaying effect. On a fateful day, the swaying led to enormous twisting, a phenomenon termed as aeroelastic fluttering. Fortunately, no fatalities were caused by the collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Death Ray Debacle the Vidara Hotel and Spa was opened in December 2009. It is one of several hotels, spas and casinos found in Las Vegas. Its construction cost amounted to approximately $8.5 billion. However, it had a fatal design flaw. At midday, constantly for 90 minutes, sunshine was reflected by the glass building at a single point in the pool area, which made it hot enough to singe hair and to melt plastic. Actually, the curved glass surface of the hotel acted like a parabolic reflector dish. The concave shape of the surface was ideally suited for reflecting the sunlight intensely, and it concentrated the light onto a 10 by 15 foot hot zone on the pool deck. Despite having $8.5 billion spent on it, the hotel's design had an unprecedented flaw that could just not be fixed. College Chaos Frank Gehry was described by Vanity Fair magazine as the most important architect of our time. Buildings designed by Gary are known for their individuality and brilliance. MIT appointed Gary as their chief designer for their new center meant to accommodate innovative artificial intelligence and computer science research labs, also known as Starter Center. $300 million were expended on the construction of its building, and MIT paid an additional $15 million to Gary. The resultant building looked like a hurting structure. Gary is famous for his boundary-pushing design, but Starter Center seems beyond boundaries of good taste and was also prone to leakage, cracks, mold, and drainage issues. MIT had to expend an additional amount of $1.5 million on repairs and sued Gary's office for it. However, the lawsuit was dropped as both parties reached an amicable conclusion, but for some critics, it remained a $300 million disaster for MIT. Billion Dollar Disaster the commonly known tower The Hancock, 200 Clarendon Street, Boston, was to be opened in 1971. However, it was delayed until 1976. This 100-story building was estimated to cost $75 million, but escalated to $175 million. Wastage of money continued even after the opening of the tower. During excavation at the site, temporary steel retaining walls were erected for making available space but the designer failed to evaluate the steel retaining walls could warp under the weight of clay and mud. Resultantly, soil shifted and damaged the utility lines, the pavement and buildings in the vicinity, like it happened at the historic Trinity Church, which won an $11 million lawsuit. Seemingly innovative use of blue reflective glass on the external parts of the tower led to another disaster. Right from the opening of the building, its blue glass panels started to detach and crash on the sidewalk below, 
which endangered the pedestrians. Eventually, police had to close off the street when wind speed surpassed 45 miles per hour. Repeated thermal stresses caused the blue glass panels to fall due to the expansion and contraction of air between the building's inner and outer panels. Ultimately, all 10,344 panels were replaced, which cost five to seven million dollars. Although all skyscrapers sway a little bit, in the case of the Hancock, the residents on the upper floors started to suffer from motion sickness as the building swayed extremely in the wind. A tuned mass damper was installed on the 58th floor at the cost of $3 million for absorbing mechanical vibrations. The total expenditure comes to a total of more than $966 million in cost today. It would not be wrong to call this building a $1 billion disaster. Skill at all in the mid-1970s, Poland had big plans for Krakow, which included construction of the city's tallest building, having a height of 301 feet. Due to different reasons, the building now called Unity Tower took 45 years to complete. Construction work commenced in 1975, but again stopped in 1979 due to political turmoil. At that time, the building was just the outer skeleton. Resultantly, the Polish public nicknamed it Skeletor or Tower Skeletor. The project was started again in 2007. The new design enhanced its height from 300 feet to 426 feet, but the plan was rejected by the Provincial Conservation Council. In 2005, the skeleton was valued at just 30 million zloty or $9.9 .9 million nowadays. It was finally completed in 2020 at the cost of $113 million. The intention behind the construction of the Unity Tower was to turn the center of Krakow into a mini Manhattan However, a long period taken for construction made a failure of the purpose. Tilting Town You must have heard about the Leaning Tower of Pisa, an iconic Italian landmark famous for its distinctive tilt. The Brazilian city of Sao Paulo has a whole town of tilting buildings. It's the result of the soft soil. Below the 23-foot thick layer of sand, there lies a layer of clay varying between 98 and 131 feet deep. Clay does not support well the large structures. Until 1968, the Brazilian government had not laid rules for foundations required for constructing multi-story buildings. Buildings generally have foundations around 164 feet deep, however in Sao Paulo it varies from 13 to 16 feet. Subsequently, realizing the role of soil and foundation leaning to tilting of buildings, laws were enacted for regulating construction in Sao Paulo. An effort to put the buildings upright was made, but it was limited to just one building which cost $1.5 million. Owners of homes faced a critical problem as the tilt of the buildings became noticeable and the value of the property plummeted, which led to dramatic monetary loss. Sampung Department Store South Korean capital Seoul was anticipated to host the 1988 Olympic Games. Accordingly, the city underwent an intensive urban development spree. One of the projects was the construction of the Sampung Department Store, Initially, it was meant to be an apartment tower, but future chairman Lee Juan had it transformed into a department store. This change in the purpose led to the reduction in support columns and the addition of fancy new escalators. The original designers who protested about the change were fired. Lee Juan also added the fifth floor to the building design. Space was prioritized to have more commerce activities and opportunities. Resultantly, the building became very unsafe. On the 7th of July 1990, it was open to the public. By then, cracks in the ceiling had appeared, but the management ignored them. On the 29th of June 1995, its cracks worsened to a dangerous point. The building was still not to be evacuated, as the management did not want to lose revenue on that day. By 5 p.m., the ceiling of the fifth floor started sinking, and by 5.52 p.m., workers were forced to raise alarm and evacuate the building. But it was too late, and the complete south wing fell into the basement. 1,944 people were injured, while 502 died. The property losses amounted to $216 million, which equates to $364 million by today's standards. Families of affected people demanded about $361,000 each in compensation, but they were offered only $220,000. By 2003, payouts were completed, which cost the owners $300 million, which meant the loss of the entire wealth of Li Juan. Hotel of Doom The pride of the Hermit Kingdom's government in its achievements remains above any question. North Korean authorities in the late 1980s felt a need for having an iconic skyscraper in the capital city which could compete with the Statue of Liberty in New York, 
the Eiffel Tower in Paris and Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. In 1987, they planned to construct Rio Gong Hotel in Pyongyang, which would be more than a thousand feet high and house approximately 3,000 hotel rooms and five revolving restaurants having panoramic views of the city. It was to be inaugurated in 1989, but its structure was completed by 1992. At this stage, authorities realized that being a closed state, North Korea had very little probability of attracting tourists, and inside the hotel was left empty and remains abandoned since then. Initially, it was clad with metal and glass. Subsequently, it was equipped with LED lights, which turned into a light show at night. Construction work keeps on resuming and stopping, and the hotel remains unoccupied. Construction of this desolate building cost North Korean exchequer about $750 million, or 2% of the country's GDP. Demolition Derby Till September 2021, Kunming, the capital of Chinese province Yunnan, had 15 high-rise buildings which were owned by Yunnan Hongge Real Estate. These buildings almost cost 1 billion Chinese won, or roughly equal to $157 million. These buildings remained unoccupied for about eight years as the construction company ran out of money in 2013 and the basements of the buildings were submerged in rainwater. Irreparable damage was caused to the buildings and the construction costs rose exorbitantly. Resultantly, the company had no option but to carry out a demolition derby. More than six tons of explosives used for demolition, placed at 85,000 blasting points, led the buildings to collapse in less than 45 seconds. That was one futile project. World's Tallest Tragedy In Saudi Arabia, the construction of Jeddah Tower, having a height of more than 3,281 feet, was planned. It was to exceed the Burj Khalifa by 280 feet. In 2013, its construction started and it was to house more than 700 residential and hotel rooms spread over 167 floors. The world's fastest double-decker elevators reaching speeds of up to 32 feet per second were to be installed for the movement of people. Its cost was estimated to be $1.23 billion. Steel and concrete to be used for Jeddah Tower were to be enough for the construction of eight Eiffel Towers and six Hoover Dams, respectively. Jeddah Tower was scheduled to be inaugurated in 2017, but when its construction reached the 67th floor, construction work was suddenly stopped due to contracting issues. In 2018, a series of anti-corruption purges in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia led to the seizure of assets of hundreds of businessmen, including those in charge of Jeddah Tower, and since then there's been no progress on the project, although the consortium funding the tower showed intention to complete it. Therefore, it remains unusable. Which of these projects figures to be the biggest calamity in your opinion? Do share your views in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, but don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.